Welcome to my video on how to design a controlled scientific experiment. In order to make a really good experiment with actually legitimate results, there's certain things that a person really has to do. And um, we, used we use controlled experiments in order to answer questions about what actually is causing something to happen in reality. And in order to set up a controlled experiment, we need to have basically our set of test items split into two groups. And one of them, um, actually they're both treated identically to each other, except for one factor that's being tested. And so if you were going to set up a controlled experiment, for example, on figuring out what's the effect of adding salt on these or innocent little green plants in this garden bed. Um, what would it, how would it affect the number of leaves, maybe, that are grown by the bean plants? So we're wondering, what's the effect of salt on the number of leaves grown by bean plants? Well, you could test that in a random way, or you could actually control your experiment. And here's how you would do it. You would make five or six groups one of them would be the control group. It has no salt added to its soil. It's just the regular standard way you would grow the plants. Group, and then that would you maybe call it group one or the control group. The next group you'd add maybe one spoon, teaspoon of salt to the a certain amount of soil. Group three, you could add two teaspoons, group four more, and so on. So you add different amounts of salt to several different groups. And so what you're getting then is a control group, which is a group of test items in an experiment that are used to compare with the experimental group. And this is generally the more common, standard, or familiar item, what normally happens, what you'd expect all the time, just on average, this is the normal thing. So in, in our example, a control group might be, in a good experiment, 100 different bean plants, all grown in regular soil with a regular amount of sunlight and water with no salt added. So this is just what normally happens. The experimental group is the group or groups of test items where you've changed only one thing, and that change is called the experimental or the independent variable. It can have two names, so just get used to both. It's the experimental variable, it's the thing you're changing. That's also called the independent variable. And for our example, the experimental group is actually several sets of bean plants, maybe 100 bean plants grown in regular soil mixed with, say, 30 grams of salt per liter, another 100 plants with 60 grams of salt per liter, another 100 plants with 90 grams, and so on. So you have different amounts of salt in your experimental group. This way you can determine the effect of a certain amount of salt on the plants. Notice that you need more than one test item. You can't just take one bean plant and say, oh wow, I did such a good experiment. You should maximize your sample size. The larger the number of test items you have, the more accurate your estimate is going to be of the results. Because, you know, if you had just one plant, like, what if your little brother stepped on it and you didn't know that he stepped on it? Then it's all squished and small and you say, oh, the salt made it be squished and small, but it's actually your little brother. Uh, so you need a lot of plants to see generally what's happening. And also your groups that you're using should reflect the natural variation in the population. So they should be called representative groups. So for example, if you were studying bean plants, you'd want to get a variety of, well, the same kind of bean plant, but a good variety of actual physical plants. Like you wouldn't want to just p pick accidentally the weakest, most measly looking bean plant and experiment only on that one plant. You'd want to have a whole variety of plants so that they, um, you're seeing the natural variation in the population. And so you could randomly select them or systematically sample at random to avoid biasing the data. So for example, if you were going to study a, an effect of a medicine on all people, you wouldn't just study men. You'd study all people. 
So we're going to define some terms here to help you talk about a controlled experiment. Variable parameters are things you can measure that will change during your experiment. The independent variable is the factor that is manipulated or changed by the scientist and it's placed on the x-axis when you're graphing your results. The dependent variable is the factor that is dependent upon the variable that you were changing. So it's what's measured as a result of your experiment and it's placed on the y-axis when graphing. So for example with the salt experiment and the soil, the factor that is being manipulated or changed by the scientist is the amount of salt in the soil. And you would put the amount of salt on the x-axis. The dependent variable is what you're measuring. You're hoping to measure the effect on the leaves, so you'd be counting the number of leaves. That's the dependent variable. So right here in our experiment, the independent variable, think about it, it's the amount of what? Oh, you're right. It's the amount of salt added to the soil. You're so good at this. Now, what would it be called if you, after two months, you count the number of average leaves of plants on the plant, the average number of leaves on the plants from both groups. So you're counting the number of leaves. It's not the independent variable, it's the dependent variable, yes. Because the dependent variable depends, it's dependent, on the independent variable. A lot of times in an experiment the independent variable might be time. It happens all by itself. It's very independent. The dependent variable is going to be totally dependent. It will change based on what's going on with the independent variable. Controlled parameters are things that you measure in the experiment that you can control. They're factors that are kept the same in both control and experimental groups. Now, if you don't do a good job controlling them, you can get some errors creeping up in your experiment. Controlled parameters in this example are light, the amount of water the plants get, the amount of regular fertilizer they get, the type of plant they are. I mean, you wouldn't, like, compare cactuses with bean plants. Those are totally different plants. Uh, the amount of humidity, things like that.